Welcome to the beautiful city of Hollywood, Florida, the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino for a historic night of mixed martial arts action inside the cage. For the first time in history, virtual combat and live combat will meet as Action Fight League presents Fight Game. Hey everybody, I'm Jay Adams alongside Blake Bowman and Blake. 400 gamers next door to us right now and they're all going at it right now. They're gonna be trying to make it into the finals. Just two gamers will be on the stage here going for the Mortal Kombat 11 championship belt. And I have to admit, Jay, as honored as I always am to be on a call with you, or any call in general, if I'd have known about this, I'd be number 401 because before I was an mixed martial arts fighter, I was a gamer oh, wow. and uh, not too bad at the Mortal Kombat. If you, uh, Whoa, if you remember, that was my day. That we're going to get day. some good inside scoop then. That's awesome. I don't know. I'll try. I'll do, I'll, 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 I'll do my best. Looking forward to it. It's always a good time. Always fun to have uh, something extra. Something it's going to be apart. great to watch the gamers in here. They're going to have a good time coming in here. And I understand all of the people who registered for Mortal Kombat 11 next door, they're going to get to be able to come in and watch the fights as well. So it's pretty well, much pretty the same, lucky. same demographic of people who love combat. So well, let's talk a little bit about the cards because not only are we going to have virtual combat uh, next door and here, but we're also going to have live combat, the cage right behind us. Nine fights on the card. You know a little bit about that co-main event. Trisha, Trisha is on the card. Trisha and Cicero, yeah, uh, she's going to be. Brandy Navarez. Brandy Nervais will be yeah. on the card. And now talking, you know, about Trisha Cicero, Wow, I watched some video on her. She is looking so good right now. She's peaking at just the right time. The word that comes to my mind when I watch her fight is bully. She she does have a very forward pressure style, but uh, she also is good at setting traps. She has a karate background. Also a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under the legendary Marcos uh, Pavampinha Damata. Tonight, she will also be cornered by uh, her close friend and training partner, Joana Janjacic. Uh, so that, as far as corners go, Joanna and Pahumpa doesn't get much better than that, but Brandy also has a very strong um, bullying forward pressure style, so you're going to have two girls that like to come forward meeting in the middle, and that there's nowhere to go but fireworks for that. Trisha and Brandy both known to have good boxing skills as well, and they both have said they are willing to stand and trade here in the co-main event. Let's talk about the main event. It is very compelling. Emmanuel Verdeer and Mehdi Hassan at 205. These are two other guys who are both students of the sport of boxing, especially Mehdi. I mean, this guy's like an encyclopedia when it comes to boxing. And Emmanuel Verdeer has great hands. Both of these light heavyweights have said they are going to stand and trade in the main event. Without any question, I've, been, I've trained with Mehdi for quite, quite some time. Uh, incredibly fast hands, even a heavyweight, remarkably fast and a ton of power. Uh, Emmanuel Verdeer, I've, I've, I've had the pleasure to commentate his fight. Ridiculous, ridiculous power. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's going to be fireworks. I don't expect, I don't see it going more than more than one round. I'll be surprised if the cage holds them. All right, nine fights on the card. It is fight game. Let's hit it.
Ladies and gentlemen, the following welterweight bout is brought to you by Shadow Cabaret. Introducing first, in the blue corner, standing at five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 168.8 pounds, with a professional record of one win and one loss, and fighting out of the combat club in Lantana, Florida. He is Luca Valentine. And his opponent in the red corner, standing at five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170.9 pounds, with a professional record of two wins and one loss. And fighting out of American Top Team Sunrise in Sunrise, Florida. He is Kenley, the Highlander. Lewis. Referee Russ Greenberg with the instructions. Okay, guys, you went through the rules backstage. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Good luck. All right, this fight's scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. That's 170 pounds on the right-hand side of your screen. Well, right now, you're getting a good look at third man in. Russell Greenberg on the right-hand side of your screen. Kenley St. Louis in the gray trunks. And on the left-hand side, Luca Valentin in the black trunks. Here we go. Both guys looking for quick action, you, you know that. There we go, looking low, looking low. A lot of low kicks in the Wolfpack camp. A lot of low, low to set up the high kicks. Classic uh, classic kickboxing style, right? Work low, work low, go high. Um, of course, a lot of classic kickboxing as well in Combat Club. Rodney Brewer, a, a great boxing trainer. Jason Samcho, Angel Corchado, both high-skilled kickboxers. So it'll be two guys that can grapple that are looking to strike, Jay. Yeah, when you find the fighters from Eastern Europe, Blake, these guys could have 30 fights you don't even know about. Right, correct. And, uh, you know, who knows how many stand-up battles Luca Valentin has had over there in Romania and a lot of the other Eastern European countries. I go over there and do shows in Bucharest, and it's shocking. Some of these guys have 60 fights, and they're 27 years old. Ooh, good job of keeping his balance there for Kenley. Kenley almost uh, almost took a bad step. Working to the back, but Luca doing a good job of using the wizard to keep Kenley off his back. But uh, double underhooks locked in nice and tight for Kenley St. Louis. Kenley St. Louis looks powerful. He is. He certainly is. With those quads. <laughs> <laughs> That's 170 pounds. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> As I said, I've gotten in rounds with him um, throughout uh, th throughout uh, my career. He is uh, he's powerful, uh, and uh, he's slick. He's slick to his striking is. Uh, He'll snake charm you. He'll lull you to sleep, and then um, you know, wake up asking what happened. Yeah, I asked him uh, who he emulated or who he thought he fought like strategically and stylistically like, and he said T. Wood and Israel, Israel Adesanya. Mm. Those are his two guys that he's really, you know, he follows, that he emulates, and uh, two, it's not a, not, a bad, not, a, not a bad duo there. To, if you have to pick two guys to emulate. Sure. And Luca is not getting just, uh, he's not getting ragdolled here by Kenley. Kenley's strong, but Luca is, uh, is, is going ounce for ounce with him in the power department. Yeah, it really, yeah, it's a good power matchup. Well, like you said at the beginning, it's a pick em. Yeah, but it's the, uh, the underhooks, the, the positioning, and the technique that is, uh, that's giving Kenley the advantage in these exchanges. There we see one uh, over under with the uh, head position. Uh, Going to press Luca into the cage there. And... Uh, just kicking kick the calf there, hooking the uh, knee in the thigh, knee in the quad. Uh, just kind of looking to uh, uh, take some spring out of the step as Kenley St. Louis uh, out of the step of, uh, of Luca Valentin here. If you just tuned in, you're watching Action Fight League presenting Fight Game. I'm Jay Adams alongside Blake Bowman. Glad you joined us. It's been a great night of fights still to come. Christian Inestria versus Rob Fuller. Danny Sabatello steps into the cage to meet Ernest Walls mm -hmm. in our co-main event. Tricia Cicero against Brandy Nervice. In the main event, of course, Mehdi Hassan, Emmanuel Verdier. That'll be a good scrap as well at 2.05. It'll be a good while it lasts. I figure, I don't know who, 
but somebody's going down early, <laughs> going down in that one. Two boxing aficionados with all the power in the world. Nice, nice scramble by Kingley St. Louis, though. Not willing to concede the bad position, and sometimes that will be what you look back on after a three-round war and realize that you won because you refused to give up the bad position. Yeah, I love how he tucked his knees in. Mm -hmm. He's able to kind of toss Valentin with his knees. It's just the roll, too, the scramble. Quick yeah. reflexes. Gave him a little bit of that Captain Kirk from the old Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Star, Star, Star <laughs> Trek, Star <laughs> Trek, sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there he finally drags him down. Does Kenley St. Louis underhook, control, transition to the back there. Oh, beautiful move One to One hook take in, throwing back. hard shots. Russ Greenberg saying, mind your weapons. Keep them off the back of the head. Second hook goes in in the meantime, between time, though. Kenley St. Louis here, um, not in optimal position. Oh, that is getting worse. Luca was going to want to turn that left shoulder through, and he's trying to do just that. Luca doing a good job of pinning Kenley's left arm, A, taking it out of the equation, and B, taking away the ability to follow the hips. 30 seconds left here. Now Kenley's able to get both hooks in. Two on one for Luca, protecting the neck. Shots to the back of the head from Kenley St. Louis. He's got to watch out for that. Greenberg's warmed him once already. Tight fight like this, you don't want to lose a point. Oh, no, you're giving it away? Good Man. job by Valentin trapping that left hand and keeping himself out of danger in a very bad position. Yeah, doing a good job of hiding his head in the hole right there in the armpit so that Kenley can't get to it. Um, finishes the round though. That's a bad way. That's a bad way. That way to finish the round with your back taking in punch in the body. But uh, last thing the judges see. All right, second round. How'd you score the first round? Once again, just because of the back control there at the end, the way that he finished the round, I think you got to give it to Kenley. Um, there's an awful lot there that could have gone the other way for Luca, but uh, just once again, Kenley just a step ahead. It was the underhooks that was winning him the positional battles. Mm, almost a clash of heads there. So if you were in Valentin's corner, what adjustments would you have given him to deal with that? Stay out of this. Stay out of this double underhook exchange. He's taking away Valentin's ability to strike here, most importantly. Also, he has a uh, chance for the takedown. But uh, he's taking away the ability to do any kind of significant striking for uh, is, is Kenley St. Louis. You can see Valentin's corner yelling for the underhook and for the turn, and he did it. Did just that. Horsepower from Valentin. Another digging pummel there for Kenley. Double stands him up to the cage. Double underhooks again for Kenley St. Louis. He's a very strong guy to have uh, to have double underhooks on. Yes, not a good place to be. 
kind of trying to split those legs. Yeah, I'd rather see him do this, come around and try to lock his hands, bring the knees together uh, to get this double leg here before he rips. See, he, pull, he pulled before he got his grip. Luca was able to switch his hips and keep his butt on the case. Now he's got the grip there. Luca stands him up with the underhook there. Good job of counter wrestling from, uh, from Luca. Oh, and he's looking on top. Wow. Yeah. Great move by Kinley, Kinley's passing the arm. They're looking for a triangle here. Luca's going to try to get that, to, uh, get that uh, left elbow back in. Excuse me, right elbow. Kinley's for giving up on the triangle, throwing some elbows now. Now Luca's in full guard. St. Louis off the back. Combat Club Land 10 is calling for more elbows. They want to see some. That was a good one that landed here. too. This is the this is the money for Valentin. Man, aggressive, aggressive attacking guard here for St. Louis, getting high, looking for an armbar off the cage or a triangle, whatever presents itself first. Lucas should be throwing elbows here, posturing up and throwing elbows. Yeah, and that's exactly what the Combat Club Land 10 of Barani Brewer has got veins popping out of his neck, begging for elbows. That's a big head he's got, too, to have all those veins poking out of <laughs> That was Blake Bauer who said, Bowman who said that not. No, it was Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it Bowers. This is where my blood sugar starts going. If I, did, if I hadn't known Rodney for over a decade, I may not make the jokes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is what I know. Defensive, defensive guard now for Kenley St. Louis. Kind of controlling the posture, locking it up here, making um, making uh, <clears throat> making Luca Valentin do all the hard work here from inside the guard. But this is much better, uh, a much better script for Valentin. A much Absolutely. better protocol. Much. This is where he wants to be. This is where he could possibly steal the second round and make this thing a, a dead heat going into the third round. Yeah, I just like to see a little bit more elbows out of him, a little more effort to do some, uh, there's one, a little more effort to do, to do some uh, do some damage and score some real points. Who's bleeding here? Kinley, Kinley's got a cut from that big elbow when uh, the one earlier. Elbows, boy, they're just so de so dangerous and they can really get you right back into the fight. Yeah, yeah man, that is right in the eye socket there. Uh, for yet another former XFN uh, champion, Kenley St. Louis, 155-pound champion, in, I'm sorry, 170-pound champion in XFN as an amateur. Two out of three uh, so far tonight. Shane O'Shea, he did pretty well. Kenley St. Louis is not where he wants to be here. Beautiful round here for the young Romanian. Perfect round here. Yep. Getting, getting crawling back into this fight because you don't want to be buried. You don't want to be upside down going into a third round no. with Kenley St. Louis. No. You don't want to have to finish Kenley St. Louis. No. No, because that's hard to do. So with about 45 seconds to go in the second round, Luca Valentin making a very good showing of himself here. Absolutely. You know, it started when he got that underhook and he was able to turn him. As he turned the tide, he got the sweep. Well, that toss, it's a toss. And he's been able to maintain top since then. Yeah, and he's done a great job. He's cut Kinley, he's done damage. Um, he's, he's scored here, he's, he's, he's still attacking. Kinley looking for that arm bar now, getting, getting those hips way out. There's a, the cage would get in the way of a sweep here. Maybe he's gonna go to the back, he better get the underhook first. Not enough time for it to matter. I'm saying up here, yeah, it's, uh, it's one to one, on, one, my, to one on my scorecard here. But after that female fight, I'm not gonna, right. I'm not gonna count, ugh. Oh.
No, absolutely. Well, Kenley's, round Kenley's a class guy. He's a sportsman. The, cr the crowd begins chanting, Kenley, Kenley. Roaring. If you're, if you're not a Luke oh, of... Oh! 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 Man, they didn't, neither guy is even faced by that. Wow. Yeah, Kenley can eat a punch. Yeah, he certainly can. Nice inside leg kick there, low, low from Luca. Now he's outside of the range of Kenley's punches. Nice right nice hit from Kenley now. Mm -hmm. He's starting to trade. Yep. The roar of Kenley may start to uh, build up in the crowd here, but if you're not a Luca Valentine fan after this fight, then I don't know what you're looking. Nice. Oh. Oh, that might have hurt him. Beautiful kick on the break from the Romanian. Absolutely. Now the Romanian's starting to pour it on. Body lock. He looks fresh, and Kenley looks a step behind here. This is not where you want to be. You do not want to be busted, bloody, and on bottom with over four minutes to go. And, and Valentin has already proved he can control from side control. And do damage. And do big damage inside of Kenley's guard. Kenley was attacking submissions and, that, and got his eye opened up for his trouble. This is the last place. The ATT Sunrise protege wants to be. Kenley St. Louis has got to get out of this situation. Luca Valentin has proven, as you said, he's got nasty elbows. Yeah, nasty elbows and great top control. Almost an escape there from St. Louis, causing a scramble, but uh, Luca able to maintain that chest, uh, chest to chest, and get that underhook, and uh, flatten Kenley back out. Three and a half left. Kenley St. Louis has got to have some urgency here because um, he was on his back for most of the second round. Nothing saying he's not going to stay here for the rest of this round. He better get to work. So with three minutes and 20 seconds to go in the fight, it is now Luca Valentin. It was, it was a momentum shift that Absolutely. happened during the second round, and it's continuing here into the third round. And, and if you ask me, Luca's picking up speed. Picking uh, up speed, yes. Yes, that's, it's funny how you feel the momentum. Yeah, he's heading downhill with it now. Now full There's guard for Kenley. Nothing like seeing your opponent bloodied and him getting up slowly at the end yep. of the uh, second round. Th that as much as like, anything. It's will kind of inflate you, you know? That as much as anything. Did I hurt him or did I just cut him? And then he sees how he gets up. He knows he hurt him. Big right hand from Afghanistan there for Kenley St. Louis. Didn't land. And I believe that... Uh, is Valentin bloody or is he just, or is he just wearing blood. it? I saw blood. He yeah. could just be wearing it. But I did see him rub his eye as well. I wonder if he might have gotten poked in the eye. See, it's, see how he squinch? You see him squinch in there? Exactly. Um, Kenley St. Louis now pressures him into the corner. And there's one thing that's not going to happen. Kenley St. Louis is not going to be an easy submission. His professional debut, I had the pleasure of commentating that for uh, XFN. And he literally clawed and bit his way out of submission after submission, refusing to be finished. This guy will fight until he is hamburger. Two minutes left here. He better get to work if he wants to win this one. Oh, they're going to make and the last slugging. two minutes fireworks. Nice entry there. Good, good hips by St. Louis. Yeah. Beautiful hip toss. Also good hips again. Knee to the oh, face there. Oh, nasty right knee from Man. Valentin. Man, if you weren't a Luca Valentin fan before this fight, you you got to be one now. Holy cow, this guy is gritty and good. A lot of guys would have given up psychologically at the end of the first round, thinking I've been beaten in every aspect of the game. But he made adjustments. That's the mark of a champion. Exactly. Adjustments, and he made and he made the right adjustments because he is uh, he's cruising these last five minutes or so. Yeah, you know what you're talking about when you're talking about you know being a fan of Valentin. If you had watched just the first round and then someone told you that he won the second and third round, you'd be like, wow. Both guys uh, kind of mouth yeah. breathing a little <laughs> bit here now, but man. <laughs> when are you going to burn out going that hard? Oh, oh nice right oh, hand from oh, Valentin. Oh, oh, And the combat club corner saying, go, go, go. Yeah, that was Oh, a, another good right clip there. There's some of that Israel out of sight. Matrix uh, going on. <laughs> Hands on the hips for Luca though, but the right hand was loaded up, ready to go. Pouring on the punishment. Oh, oh, Lance Big. Oh, the Kenley St. Louis is hurt there. Oh, Indeed, a knee to the man. face there. Right to, that, right to the bad eye. Back to the clinch, they go 45 seconds. Killers are some big shots there. Uh, I, I think that Valentin is ill-advised to clinch and hold here. I think, I think if he were to start pouring it on, he could drop Kinley. It could be a gas tank issue. He might you know, be you know, trying to grab a quick 10. I'm gassed by watching him. <laughs> Beautiful takedown there, just as soon as I start questioning timely, the motives. Timely, timely takedown. 20 seconds End of left. The round. End of the fight. Oh, Why boy. take the risk in a, in a firefight in the middle of the cage if you can stall out on top, throwing some shots there? Kenley's still big dangerous, elbows. man. That's a 50-50 danger. It is. It is indeed. Ten seconds left. Probably not enough time for St. Louis to snatch a submission here. Half guard, top control, pin in the arm. Going to end with some shots here. 
Whoa, what a fight. Wow, man. What a fight. Luca Valentin. That was a war of attrition. St. Louis, a beautiful match. Beautiful scrap at 170. Look at how yes. tired both, both of these guys. welterweights are, man. They're blocking the door. <laughs> the corners can't get in. They're laying on the door. Man, if, if, if either guy's got anything left, I don't know where it could possibly be. Kenley St. Louis just took Luca Valentin's in his corner. He's sitting in his corner. <laughs> he took his stool. <laughs> he's saying, I'm taking that. I don't care. I'm sitting. He's hurt, man. He's hurt. Yeah. He got he got cracked. He got cracked three there. Three or four times Here really hard. He got hit by punches. Boom. And right the right, guys right hand yeah. landed there. But then, let's see. We're going to load it up here for Luca Valentin. Faint. Bang. Boom. Right, there. right hand on right the there. button. That Lucas like, are you still standing? Yeah, he didn't press the issue standing? here. Boom, another good right hand. Kinley's Kinley's throwing as hard as he can. <laughs> that is your Adesanya uh, flying knee there. And bing, bang, popcorn, some more shots there. If they have the decision, let's let Chris, uh, our, I'm sorry, Blake Chadwick wrap it up, make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, with judges' scores of 29-28, 29-28, and 29-28, your winner, the unanimous decision in the blue corner, Luca Valentin. He scored it just like us, all three of them. Yeah, yeah, they got it right. Ladies and gentlemen, this 140 pound catch weight bout is brought to you by Alligator Alley Harley Davidson of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Introducing first in the blue corner, standing at five feet, five inches tall, weighing in at 138.4 pounds with a professional record of two wins and seven losses and fighting out of Team Top Notch in Chicago, Illinois. He is Ernest. And his opponent in the red corner, standing at five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 139.2 pounds, with a professional record of four wins and zero losses, and fighting out of American Top Team, Coconut Creek, in Coconut Creek, Florida. He is Danny, the Italian gangster. Step Referee Russ Greenberg with the instructions. Oh, 
Okay, guys, went through the rules backstage. I want a nice, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Good luck. Touch him up. Okay. Oh. Danny oh. says no. He's not oh. fresh, so the fights are over. <laughs> and Danny's one of those guys that shows up and punches the time clock. He doesn't hang out around ATT. He comes in, he puts in the work. He's there to work. He works for the best in the world. He's cornered by uh, Muhammad Lawal. Congratulations on your retirement, King Mo. Uh, Johnny Edwin, an undefeated Bellator uh, uh, rising star contender. And, of course, uh, Steve Bruno, striking maestro of American top team. Round number one underway. That four-inch height advantage is more pronounced than four inches, if you ask me. Boy, he looks way bigger than Ernest. All right, uh, Ern I mean, Ern Ernest is still out for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's thick. He's thick. Nice, nice long jab from Danny. Answered right away by Ernest. Nice you kick. couldn't have put it better, though. Nothing to lose for Ernest whatsoever. Just come in and take a shot. Hey, why not? Come Man, in. Bite down Anyone that mouthpiece lucky? and throw it. Yep. Not even lucky. Just bite down and throw what you got. Do what won you those first two. But now Danny's going to make it a wrestling match. Taller, stronger, more physical. Just rikes him down right here, right in front of us. Getting right to work with that left hand. Sabatello working over the rib cage for, uh, for my man Ernest here. Ernest, Ernest Wall the fourth. Keep that fourth in there. And right back to his feet, though, goes, goes Mr. Wall. But those double unders and a beautiful lateral reversal there from uh, from from Ernest the fourth, hunting the neck now. Once again, dance with the girl that brought you. Going back to the neck, Sabatello passes guard into side control. Now he's oh, attacking the back. Gave up his back. One hook in. That's deadly. You can't you can't make those kind of mistakes with a guy like Danny Sabatello. He's going to flatten him out. Start punching here. No, he may have that choke already in. Oh, good defense there from Ernest. Ernest has some wrestling background. He's got some jits. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's not clueless by a long shot there. Beautiful uh, counter lateral again. Sabatello stretches him out. That's on the neck. That's bad. It's and over. That's over. It's over. That Danny all Sabatello. Wrote. Another quick finish here. We're seeing some class difference now. Yeah. As we get onto the main card now, Blake, mm -hmm. we're seeing some class difference in the fights. Yeah. You see how fast are they are they're getting finished? It's a yeah. class difference. Yeah, Danny Sabatello is a stud. He is for real. He is not height. 5-0, five, five and oh, but it is, uh, once again, he tests himself in the gym every day. He doesn't. He does not. He's not hanging out taking selfies for Facebook. He's in there to 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 kick it and get it kicked. And here we go, right here. He's got the back. Doesn't even bother getting the second hook in. Just got the Marcelo Garcia lock and stretches him out long. And that is a bad place to be. Tap out. That is all she wrote. Sabatello bumps his record to five and zero. Oh, yet to taste defeat in mixed martial arts competition. Here we go. Let's make this one official. Burning through the featured bout. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Russ Greenberg stops the fight at 1 minute 34 seconds of round number one. Your winner via rear naked choke in the red corner, Danny the Italian Gangster, Sabatello.
ladies and gentlemen, the following bout is your fight game MMA co-main event of the evening. And it's a women's flyweight bout brought to you by MMA Science. Introducing first in the blue corner, standing at five feet, six inches tall, weighing in at 127.6 pounds, with a record of zero wins and two losses, and fighting out of weapons at hand, and Corpus Christi, Texas, she is Brandy. her opponent in the red corner, standing at five feet, four inches tall, weighing in at 125.8 pounds, with a professional record of two wins and three losses, and fighting out of American Top Team Coconut Creek in Coconut Creek, Florida, and Syracuse, New York, she is Trisha Cicero. All right, guys, I gave you the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out by you. All right, so Cicero at 2-2 two two as a pro and 4-0 and oh as an amateur. Great record, great school. Looking to take out the always tough out, Brandy Killer B. Narvice. Narvice on the left-hand side of your screen. She's in red. And on the right-hand side of your screen, Cicero in gray. I like those Texas flag tights. That's good. That's good. Or shorts, excuse me. She's a very, uh, very, very right away patriotic with the body Texan. She's right away with that left kick. Another one there. Trish needs to get to work uh, on an angle there. Side kick to the chest from Trisha. Double jab on the way out. Nice inside low kick there from Trisha. Hockey, hockey fight. Hockey fight. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about hockey fights? You heard us both go, hockey fight. <laughs> yeah, Trisha can't quite get uh, Brandy's back to the cage. There she goes, finally. Yeah, Brandy's strong here for sure. This is the position where Brandy attacks a lot. Good job of scooping the leg there on the single leg, lifting high on the high crotch there. Is, is Trisha Cicero looking to hook the leg again. Needs to pull her off and run the pipe. You can hear Brandy's corner telling her to keep that weight on her. They want her Absolutely. to put the weight on the top of the head of Trisha. Beautiful leg. single leg takedown there from Trisha Cicero. She has been working with Mike Brown, of course, uh, um, primary training partner for Ioanni and Jacek in her corner under the tutelage of Mike Brown and a little guy named Steve Mako, a former United States Olympic wrestler himself. And Trisha. Mike, Mike uh, Brown, he's an okay coach. Okay, coach. He knows a thing or two about a thing or two. And I, I understand they actually fought at some point in time as well. Trisha Cicero here on top side control. But needs, to, needs to remain heavy cutting that knee through there so she doesn't get rolled over here. But she's doing just that. Excellent job of shoulder pressure while she drives the knee through. Navarez uh, recaptures half guard. That's okay. Trish has the underhook. Navarez taking some deep breaths there. Navarez uh, does have a purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So both ladies purple belts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That is with Gracie Baja, Texas. Mm -hmm. Trisha nice and heavy on top here. You guys that underhook very, very well. There was a point in time where Trisha was um, used and abused as a sparring partner for a young lady named Amanda Nunez. Uh, she decided that... Uh, <laughs> Switch weight divisions? <laughs> well, no, she, was, she came home and said, I thought that maybe I'd go up to 135. I sparred with Amanda today. I'm never going to 135, ever. <laughs> That's all she needed to do. She's got her home here at 125. Very, very easy weight cut, by the way. She woke up... Uh, I have it on good authority that she woke up in her bed at uh, 129, the morning of weigh-ins. Only had a couple to cut. She had that great war with uh, Angie Jennings. She did. She's had yeah. two of them. Actually. Kylie O'Hearn. Yes. Yeah, that was, uh, that was in Hearn's Boston, very, right? Very, very tough fight. Yeah. yeah. A tough out for about a year ago. My favorite yeah. line from their commentators up there. So I guess Kylie O'Hearn kind of has like Mark of the Beast eyes. Like she does. Yeah, like she devil does, eyes. does. 
So someone said, get me some holy water, commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha pretty much so working the mount here, three-quarter mount. Cage is going to block her. She doesn't need it. She can go to a neon belly type position here right in front of her corner. She could not be any better placed as far as that goes. Joanna Janjacek, mm -hmm. Pompa de Mata. Right, right there. leg free, man. That's as good as mount. There, there now that is yeah. mount. Now give her a second to work, keep the knee down, let her turn her back, start throwing some elbows here. Nope, looking to get the hooks in. There's an elbow. Navarro's able to block that, got the hand nice and high, or arm, excuse me, nice and high. And Tristan, a very good job. We're pulling her off the cage to take away. <laughs> Demata says, thank you. Walks her off the cage to stop her from pushing off to get extra leverage, uh, did Trisha. A nice ground and pound there from Cicero. Some right hands. Want to force Navarro to turn the back. Trisha's got one hook in. Not forcing the back, I like that. Looking for the choke, Un the under the, naked choke. Under, under the neck, very deep, but she's lost the hook. Can she control the position or not is the question. Plenty of time. Yeah. Narvice is not yeah. panicking. No, Nar Narvice is in a position where she is safe from the choke here. Yeah, now Trish needs to trap that arm and go to a gift wrap. Now gets both hooks in. Again, beautiful job of Narvice of killing that hook to stop the choke from sinking in. Now Trish has got both chokes in under the neck. This could be, this could not be good. Short choke there, feet are crossed. And Together. there is the submission. Trisha Cicero captures her first submission as a professional. She did have two arm bars as an amateur. She jacked her knee though. Yeah, that does not look good. Does that, is that a previous injury? Um, she's she's had, almost she's, looks like she expected it. She's, yeah, not, she's not surprised. No, uh, she did not have a, she has had a meniscus injury in the past. Um, that has not been a nagging injury during this camp, so that is something that happened. Yeah, she's in pain. I think it popped just now. I think it popped Chase. Here we go to the, here we go there. Yeah, look at that. Look at the, yeah, the foot's in a weird position there. Yeah, it's torqued. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I don't, she, it was torqued. I think that might be right where it happened, but here's the short choke on the trachea, and there is doing her no favors. And there was the submission. There we see Yolani and Jacek, Pahompa, uh, Ben Stark as well. Ben Stark is a, is a heck of a cut, man. I'm glad he won't be needed in this fight. Um, who does, uh, there you see a very, very happy well Chris earned. Cicero, well earned moving to three and two now into the positive category as a pro. Yeah. Yeah, not putting weight on that right leg though. Ladies and gentlemen, at four minutes, 45 seconds of round number five now, your winner via rear naked choke in the red corner, Trisha Cicero.
ladies and gentlemen of Hollywood, Florida. Inside the Hard Rock Event Center at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. And everyone watching worldwide. Get ready. It's main event time. The following will be a three round light heavyweight bout brought to you by Naked CBD. Introducing first in the blue corner, standing at six feet, one inches tall, weighing in at 205.9 pounds, with a professional record of five wins and two losses, and fighting out of Omni Boxing and TFL MMA in Margate, Florida. He is Emmanuel. His opponent in the red corner, standing at six feet tall, weighing in at 206 pounds, with a professional record of five wins and three losses, and fighting out of American Top Team, Coconut Creek in Coconut Creek, Florida. He is Betty Sugar Bear. Referee Russ Greenberg with the instructions. Okay, guys, listen, we went through the rules backstage. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Good luck, touch him up. Let's do this. Yeah, he, I, he, Sugar Bear, Sugar it's, Bear. It's so good for him, you know, because yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's obviously an allusion to Sugar Ray Robinson, his favorite boxer of all times, and all the other subsequent sugars. Mine too. So, you know, that's the sugar part of it, then the bear part of it is just bear, man. He's a bear. Look at that guy. And now it's time to set this powder keg off. Right, right hand lead from Verdier. Medi in the southpaw stance. Yeah, look at these. There's a boxing. boxing. Big boxing. Now switching back to right hand. And and and, and Medi switches well. Southpaw do a conventional. Verdier got a lot of power there, man. Yeah, nice Verdier quick jab, is too. Dangerous, wow. Dangerous, man. He's dangerous. He's got that left jab, he sticks in your face, he double pumps it, and then he sneaks mm. that fast right in there. Yep, that's long, too. It's a it's long, long right hand. It's long, dude. Nice. He's so dangerous. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Slippery. Okay, I thought he, I thought his knee buckled. Yeah. You have to keep an eye on it, though. Yeah. That might have been a feint to the floor so that he wouldn't think that, so Verdier they, wouldn't they, think they he was injured. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep, could be hiding it. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Again. That would be a shame to have all that work. That comes back to, you know, he's he's in there taking out fighters who are making seven figures now in the big show. Yeah. It's got to be a little frustrating, right? Yeah. He's fought all of them. He's taken them all out. He goes, I'm not going to name names, but if you know them, i probably knock them out. And yet to, he's looking for, he's hunting for that big contract. Got to make it happen in the right time. A, an, an emphatic exclamation point knockout over uh, Verdier would be, would be, uh, would not hurt that, that campaign Wouldn't to get hurt the, the big cause, contract, my friend. Nope. Wouldn't hurt the cause. There's that jab again from Verdier, though. Just bink, 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 bink. I like that. Yeah, he fights long. And yeah. he's tall. Yeah, he's he's tall for 6'1". Yeah, he, he is. I don't know if it's the fro or what it is. He looks 6'2", six, 6'3". His six, arms three. are long. Yeah, and his arms yeah. are long. He fights long. I mean, Medi's close to six feet, so that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Medi's right at six foot. He's at six foot, so I mean, that, and he wears some way damage too. One inch. That right hand's already already puts uh, yep. already put some work on Medi's eye there. Yep. Yeah, so far for Adir's fighting a perfect fight. Medi trying to get on that bicycle, get that get, get that leg moving. Yeah, this is Verdier's fight all day long. All day, yeah. Nice body kick too on the south, oh, which on the southpaw is uh is, is going to be there more often than not. So with the lead right hand, that he's been throwing. Which is his best weapon. So you got to kind of. If I was Medi, I might work more out of the right hand stance here. Man, he's getting lit up. Yeah, that jab is not missing for Verdier. And I do think there was an issue with the knee, and that you can see the uh, the welt above the left knee that Verdier placed on you. You'll see it. I think that there's 
an issue because he's winced a couple times when he's tried to yeah, he stumbled lateral, when he's going lateral. He stumbled a little bit, yeah. Nice check hook oh. there right in the eye. That was a oh. close fist. Medi needed to get to work. Right hand there for Medi. He's pouring Vernier's it on. In trouble. Oh, Vernier's now please comes trouble. out. Vernier takes a shot. He said he got poked in the eyes with a glove. There's some big power right there. Boom. Big right hand Boom. Ball. Russell Greenberg's Russ Greenberg looking might be thinking very about stopping this. He wants action. He's oh. calling action. Man, big shots there. Verdier fighting through it. Another big left hand there from uh, from Medi Hassan. And somehow Verdier is fighting through it. Wow, he turns Medi and puts oh, yeah. him on the cage. Yeah. Now Russell, oh, oh it's a mouth guard. I was going to say, now he's going to look at the eye, which would have been weird timing. Yeah, he's going to put the mouth guard back in. He's, he's cut. That was not an eye poke. That was a clinch. That was a clinch fist. Yeah, it looked close to me. If, I, if I'm Verdeer, I don't know that I want that, because now you're in open range again with one eye. That did not do him any favors. That right eye is completely closed. Got hit right in the eye socket with a knuckle. Oh, oh yeah. and nice, the blood. nice Look jab at the blood. there. Yeah. Nice jab from Verdeer, no less. So Verdeer now trying to take on Mehdi Hassan with just one eye. What a warrior. What nice leg kick from Verdeer. Got a minute to go here in the opener. You just tuned in, you're watching Action Fight League, which is presenting and Fight Prost. Game. <clears throat> And it has been a great night of fight so far. This is the main event. We've got Mehdi Hassan in the black trunks with the white trim. And Emmanuel Verdier, who got his eye jacked in the black trunks with gray trim. But yeah, he's fighting tough, man. He is tough indeed. And props to Russell Greenberg for not stopping that fight. Mehdi was landing some big leather. Uh, he told Verdier to improve his position. Verdier improved his position, so... Uh, the fight continues, but Mady was on some big shots there, and the way that Verdier was favoring that eye, if Russ would have stepped in, I don't think that anybody would have been remarkably surprised. So, so hats off to everybody involved in that. Mady keeping the pressure coming, Verdier fighting like a man through it, and Russ Greenberg for letting him fight through it. Now we're in the over-under clinch again here against the cage. This has got to be better for Verdier. That, uh, th that right eye is, uh, is all but closed on him now. Good job of Mady reversing the position here to the cage. Over under still looking to get a grip. I do not know. It's hard to see the cut from where we are. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely affecting the vision, obviously. And that's one of the parameters. Yeah, we will find if, out. If the fighter cannot intelligently defend himself, if his vision is affected. If to you the ask point, me, he can. He just did. He just intelligently defended himself for half a round, if you ask me. But you didn't.
Well, this is an interesting round to score uh, due to the fact that Vernier was winning, clearly winning, right up to the point where he got hurt. And yeah. then Medi turned it on. Can we get a run back on that on the on the left hand to see if that was actually a, a finger or a closed fist? I don't know if they got time to pull that up in the truck. Was it the left or was it the right? The left hand. The left hand, huh? Like a jab. I think about a check hook. Yeah, that, that cut is on the eyelid. You called that. You called it. Man, that hurts and it bleeds, but it is uh, you can fight through that all day. Uh, not quite Randy Couture, Vitor Belfort level eyelid <laughs> cut. Nice call. Or Randy could read a newspaper with his eyes closed after that one was over with. <laughs> Give it a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's cut on the eyelid. He says, you stop this fight, I'll kill you. Yeah, he's saying, please don't, I'm fine. The doctor says you can't see out of the eye. Now he's begging the commission. I think the doctor's got his mind made up here. Oh. And he does indeed. The crowd will not be happy with that. I understand the reasoning, but I feel that Emmanuel Verdeer had earned another round. He intelligently defended himself. Anticlimactic, I hate to see it in that way. That's that's tough. The doctors tonight, Robert Voltage, David Metz. But it is hey, look, it's, it's a, a bad safety. it is a bad cut and it's in a bad place. Um, rules are rules. Boom! It was not. That was not a uh, a, a finger. Oh oh oh! Now Medi. Oh, it's a disqualification. That's why Medi's upset now. They're saying it was a finger poke. No. Oh. Look, you can't fault either doctor. No, not at all. Robert Voltage, David Metz doing what they are paid to do, and that is to protect fighters, protect their health, protect their lives. All right, I'm going to give us a wrap up, boys. This is Jay Adams, my partner, Blake Bowman. I want to give a special shout out to Patrick Cunningham, the executive director of the Florida State Athletic Commission, David Gold, Doug Campbell, Justin Gonzalez, Roger Grawl, and Rick Finn, and the rest of the gang at Action Fight League for presenting Fight Game, a night of fights, and it was a blast. We'll see you next time on Action Fight League Presents. Ladies and gentlemen, at four minutes, 59 seconds of round number one, the official decision is a no contest.